13, 13 and a half. Nothing to worry about there. What's going on everybody? Back for another video today. We're out here at one of the cotton locations. It's September 22nd. And we're getting ready to pull this honey off. We're in the middle of the cotton honey harvest right now. Been going through setting boards, taking boxes off. And extracting we're kind of in the middle of that whole process right now but the thing is not getting much real cotton honey this year I don't think just the hot and dry conditions and the cotton being so late you know I don't know what has happened but get we're getting a darker honey this year off of the cotton fields it's usually a real light amber color and this year it's really dark and i'm having trouble figuring out what it might be coming from my only guess right now is the grain sorghum you know sorghum is a type of grass so you wouldn't think i never thought it would make any honey i've done some research on it or what I call research, just Googling it. You know, most people say, no, it doesn't make any honey, but there are a few people out there who say it does make a little, and it does make pollen. The seed heads on it, you know, it has a whole bunch of little florets on there, and they do little bitty flowers, just like any kind of grass, and then that turns into a little bitty seed. And there were some pictures that people had of honeybees working those little flowers, getting pollen. And there was one, did see one picture where it looked like a bee was working it for nectar. So, the best conclusion I've come to is, you know, with the, you know, the cotton flows in the middle of the summer when, you know, there's no other nectar. So. If if it's not producing much for whatever reason, you know, the bees are gonna move down to something that's to them maybe a little less desirable, but it's still gonna produce. So that's my only guesstimate. And this year with all the cotton getting rained out in the spring, there is a whole bunch of sorghum around this year. So it's pretty much everywhere. That's another data point that suggests to me that this honey's coming from sorghum, so I don't know. It's either that or my other guess was honeydew, but it don't taste like honeydew. I had a whole bunch of honeydew last year, 
and me personally i hated it i did not like the flavor but this don't have the same flavor so i don't know does a honeydew from different plants taste different i wouldn't think it would you know for anybody who doesn't know honeydew is actually comes from aphids so like when aphids kind of infest a crop or whatever you know they're they're sucking the juices out of that plant and their bodies they're taking out they're getting the proteins from that from the sap or whatever from the plant and then all the sugars and whatnot they don't use that so they excrete it and it's left on the plant as kind of like a sticky sugary substance and when the bees don't have anything else better to get they'll go gather that sticky sugary stuff and bring it back and make honey out of it people call it honeydew so we actually had a whole bunch of that last year like i was saying this don't taste the same this year Oh, what's a heavy box? I haven't recorded a video in a while. I've just been too busy. And honestly, a bunch of days just haven't felt like dealing with it. But trying to get back going here. So one of some of my last videos probably would have been moving bees out to the sunflowers and. And I think I gave a sunflower update. I've already pulled the honey off of them and extracted it and everything. And the yields on the sunflower bees were pretty poor. I don't know. If the conditions down here for sunflowers, they just don't produce much or if it's because of the drought we had. You know, at that field, there was a good rain about three weeks or so before the flowers started blooming. But I mean, all before and all throughout the bloom, it was nothing but over 100 degree days and not a drop of rain. So I don't think that's real conducive to good honey flow. The bees out there averaged 15 pounds per colony, so not very good. But got a little bit to sell, and so far people seem pretty excited about sunflower honey, so probably won't last long, but at least we got some. This top medium looks pretty empty. Yeah, a little bit of honey. Nice golden color. That'll be cotton honey, I'm pretty sure. A little more there. More here, yeah. So here's a good visual of different honeys. Let me let me show y'all. Hopefully y'all can see down in here is a much darker honey. See, and then out here on the outside is a much lighter honey. The lighter stuff's gonna be cotton blossom. And then this stuff, I don't know. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, there's nothing out here blooming. We've had no rain. Same story on the other side. Nice cotton honey on the outside. Personally, I wish it was all cotton blossom. And then more of the darker stuff. On a hive tool, don't look that dark, but then once you start getting it in containers and buckets and whatnot, it's pretty dang dark. So 
So yeah, that's what we're dealing with this year. Let's get this box off here. See what the bottom one looks like. Full box of honey. Almost. These outside frames aren't full. They got a little bit, but they're not full. But I love seeing that fresh white wax and them cappings. <whistles> Looks like money. And before, after I brought these bees out here, before I put the honey supers on, I tried to feed them up pretty good to fill this second box here because this is going to be their winter food and after doing this a few years there's kind of a time crunch between cotton blossom harvest and then getting the colony ready for winter so being able to put these honey boxes on after the spring honey and feed them up and get them pretty full then that's really reduce the amount of feeding I'm going to have to do after I get all the honey pulled and harvested so I've been happy with that been pulling these boxes off to get the excluders and they've all been real heavy they could all survive the winter right now with what they got but you know after I get all the extracting done and everything I'm going to be coming back through with mite treatments and while I'm out in the yards doing a mite treatment I'll probably just give them a couple feeders one for sure maybe two feeders full of syrup just for icing on the cake but they will be good to go for this winter well all the escape boards are set every single colony here made a good bit of honey but I didn't have enough boards to put over everybody so I had to double up four colony so I'd have enough boards so I chose the ones with the worst lids to double up this is by far the best yard I've got this year for honey production this is the last yard for me to go through so I know what all the other ones look like and they're pretty poor not much honey at all maybe averaging 10 pounds maybe I may be being pessimistic I don't know but it's not much at all if they had all been like this one I'd be in the money that's how it goes I guess found me scraped a bunch of bird comb with some honey in it it's hoping to have me a little snack later but the bees may hey gather it up before I get out of here so now the last step is to go around and check all of our seams and make sure there's none big enough where the bees can get in it's today's Friday I gotta work the farmers market tomorrow so I'll be back two days later to get these boxes so they're gonna need to be pretty secure the last two days Like this one's going to need some tape. It's real bad right there. We can definitely get in there, so that's going to get some tape. to another yard and pull honey where I set board yesterday. Well, I don't know what's in there, but it's good. I'm gonna miss my pure cotton honey, I guess, but 
that'll suffice, I suppose. Well, that is going to be a wrap on all the honey harvesting for 2023. Knocked out all the cotton blossom. That's what we were working on the other day. Got it all knocked out. Had 122 colonies on cotton. So got all the honey stripped off of them yard by yard and extracted and everything. Got the honey room cleaned up. Working on cleaning the equipment. Extractor's nice and shiny again. Uncapping tank's nice and shiny again. Got all the equipment back in here I wasn't using, like the chain uncapper, wax melter clarifying tank my table this small space I'm always moving stuff in and out of here depending on what job I got to do so getting ready for winter and this will basically just be a bottling room so get all that stuff back in here got sunflower honey in there had to come up with something new because you got two bottling tanks you usually have two varieties of honey wildflower and cotton so this year with sunflower had to come up with something else to bottle out of be making some creamed honey in there pretty soon yep wildflower got plenty of it tanks dang near full and I got plenty of buckets in storage and then the cotton kind of sad that's all we made bottled a little bit out of there as you can see the foam line but that's it for pure cotton blossom pretty sad 
yields were pretty poor this year. I don't know why. Well, some of it I know why is because it was so late. The farmers wanted it to mature out faster just so they'd have some harvestable cotton. And in or order to do that, to make the plant mature faster, they didn't water it at all. So that was part of the problem. And I don't know besides that made a whole lot of uh, the different kind of honey they were on cotton fields I don't know what they made but it's definitely not cotton blossom I don't know if it's some of it's honeydew and then there's some of it I don't know what it is um, it's it's a darker honey not quite as dark as honeydew uh, it doesn't taste near as bad as honeydew but it's still not a desirable taste to my palate uh, the only thing I can guesstimate is there's a whole bunch of sorghum around I don't know if they can make a little bit off of it that's my only guesstimate and like I said did make some honeydew unfortunately I say unfortunately because I don't like that stuff to me it tastes pretty bad it smells bad to me it smells like dirty socks or something my wife said she thinks it smells like wet dog so yeah nothing good <laughs> it tastes is terrible to me it kind of tastes like what burnt rubber smells like so I don't know it's not good if any of y'all out there like honeydew let me know or if y'all know of a way to market it or a good way to sell it you know a good channel to sell it through I don't know I think it may be like a, a beer brewer maybe to make mead I don't know or a bakery maybe because if you use it in baking you're gonna heat it up and you know it's going into a food so it's you're not gonna have that flavor to deal with I don't think I don't know, y'all let me know if y'all got any ideas. Do have some honey balled up over here, y'all. I'll show y'all the difference in color. So. Get in some. Get the lighting, man. So this side here is wildflower, and this here is sunflower, so the sunflower is obviously a little darker. And the sunflower is extremely thick. I'm not sure if that's a characteristic of the honey or if it's just because they were they dried it down in ultra dry conditions. The wildflower honey, they were trying to dry it down, it was Lots of moisture in the spring this year, lots of humidity, so I don't know if that had something to do with it or if it's the source of honey. So now it's all going to shift to all honey sales because we're getting into fall and the holiday season, so honey sales are going to be a big thing. And the most pressing thing right now is going to be getting the bees ready for winter. That's going to be mite treatments and feeding feeding is not so big because you know the way i've done things this year everybody's got a pretty full honey box on them right now i'll probably just give them a, one or two shots of syrup and they're going to be good to go so mite treatments will be most critical so yeah i guess that about sums it up in here let's go Take a look out in the reefer. It is cold in here.
had this thing running freezing all my honeycombs and brood combs and all that leftover pollen patties down here some several pallets of honey supers here all ready for next year I guess have one pallet of mediums I like to run all deeps just so everything is interchangeable and if y'all saw a video I made earlier this year when I got this whole reefer container I showed everything that was in here and I mentioned it all needed going through and sorting and everything. Well, I've got that done finally. Like I said it needed cleaned. The floor was pretty dirty, had a bunch of comb and honey in there. Got all that power, power washed out of here. That way the, the air is designed to flow through the bottom through those grates and that way it can cool down a little better. Sorted everything and used most of the honey to go back onto the hives after I, when I was stripping honey off, I'd replace it with honey boxes. So I used most of it up there. There's a whole bunch of foundation frames. So got a couple pallets of boxes with foundations in there. And then up here, those two pallets are empty brood comb basically we'll be using them next spring well these are brood combs here and then front two are just kind of they're brood combs but they're not completely empty so we got them separate so yep it is mighty cold in here so if anybody who doesn't know well, um, why you freeze this stuff is to kill the wax moth, mostly the eggs and the larvae. I think they, the moth can lay an egg and I think within three days or so they'll hatch and have a little worm going through all your combs and everything. They will absolutely destroy the comb that the bees have worked so hard to build. Not so much the pure honeycomb like this, the, the white wax, but especially the brood comb, I can't get to it, but it's a darker comb, it's got pollen in it and everything. They love that stuff. They, use, they eat the pollen in the cocoons. They use that for food, so they love that stuff. They'll get in there and absolutely destroy it. And the bees have put in a massive amount of energy and time into building out that comb. So this stuff is very valuable. So you don't want to don't want to see the wax moth destroy it. So I think that's going to about do it. I'm getting pretty chilly in here. Had it down to zero. So. Yeah, that'll about do it. I'm gonna get outside and warm back up. It's 95 outside and was zero in here, so my body's not really liking that right now. So we'll, guess we'll catch y'all on the next one. Thank y'all for watching.